Hey, it's Paul from the Movie Guys, and we've just come from a screening of Locke, which is the opening night film here at the Phoenix Film Festival, and we're with the director, Stephen Knight. Woo! An applause from us. Because it was a great film. Thank you. Yes. And, Thank uh, you. you know, and he's already known as a great filmmaker. He's got an Oscar nomination for Eastern Promises, correct? For Dirty Pretty Things. For Dirty Pretty yeah. Things. Okay. Yeah. Well, he also wrote Eastern Promises, so we're already fans. And this was a really cool experimental experience. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a big experiment, but I think it's it's going well. Going well. When do you? Th when will everyone else get to see it? Uh, April twenty fifth. It's in cinemas. I, can, I threatened people on our podcast mm. that you know you needed to get here so you could be that guy who said I saw it. I saw it already. Yeah, so exactly. I saw it was before everybody. Else. Exactly. It's a it's a word of mouth film, really. Yeah. Now, I've I've liked Tom Hardy for years. Yeah. And so uh, and so why him? I mean, there are obvious reasons because of his yeah. talent, but... Yeah, I mean, I, uh, this is a film where the, there's one actor on screen for 90 minutes, so he'd better be good. And in my opinion, he's the best we've got, we being Britain. And I think he's the best actor we've got. So I approached him, he loves theatre, and I said, this is sort of a theatre experience. And he said yes, and then we shot it. And it was uh, one of those rare experiences where the doors all flew open. You know, and you were telling the audience after the screening that you had 27 minute takes so it really was like oh, theater yeah, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. you were reacting and, and with the, the callers there in the car in yeah. the post-production of that, correct? Well the whole thing is real in the sense that you know, the plan was that I say action and then we shoot the film and we shot the whole film from beginning to end twice a night for eight nights, so we end up with 16 films um, and it's sort of trying wow. to find a new way Are of making Are we going to see the other, six, the other 15? <laughs> yeah, they'll be coming out next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they'll be, be like Anchorman. Like this is, yeah, <laughs> it'll be yeah. Lock 16. All right. like, this is the one that was a bit not quite so good. Too. I have a curious question about the ability to have a single actor on screen for the whole time mm. basically talking. Yeah. And what I actually noticed was that his accent and the accents of all the characters mm. made it slightly more engaging. Mm. So did you ever consider like Larry the Cable Guy or any other particular accent that might... Because well, without the British accent, I don't think it's as charming, to be yeah, honest well, with you. Yeah, well, the Welsh accent is... Um, of course it's Welsh. I mean, yeah, Welsh. Right. We just but, assume I mean, it's all British. But, I right. mean, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the character's got to be working class. Yeah. It's got to be from somewhere where there is a strong accent. And most accents in Britain have got baggage for a British audience. Do you really audience. think that movie would go off with just an American accent or no accent at all? Don't think we haven't thought about this. Because Tom and I right? were saying, right, okay, we'll do lot two, which will be New York. We'll right. do lot three... <laughs> Which is Which the UPS. He's always driving to a different it's the UPS hospital. Man. It's, the UPS it's his third man illegitimate child. Why not? <laughs> Seriously, but we were sort of semi-serious. Honey, we it saying, happened again. Yeah. Twice or never. <laughs> Twice or never. Twice or never. Twice or never. I know why you're calling. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we were, we were you know, thinking, well, okay, this is a format. We could maybe do New York and maybe do wow. LA. No, but we, I don't know. Because <laughs> I really think like, Larry the Cable dr Guy driving to his illegitimate child's birth would ring true for I a lot really, of Americans. I, no, but I really think the UPS thing is the <laughs> <laughs> is, Where he's the driver with the door open right. and he's and taking actually, the calls. I, speaking of that, I would like to ask a, a slightly delicate question okay. about uh, the BMW. Yes. Was there any sponsorship, any, any only, support with that? If huh? only. I mean, when we decided to do it we approached Land Rover being a British car we thought well Ivan would drop maybe they call them lorries right trucks or lorries over. lorries yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he knows <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're no, yeah. no you reminded me I forgot that. <laughs> but we we approached Land Rover and they said no for some reason so then we said to BMW would you you know give us a vehicle and they said yes and all they did was give us two vehicles one that we took the wheels off one that we shot right but and the third one you painted like the general lee and retro around, right? retrospectively <laughs> the third one should have been given to me <laughs> <laughs> which it wasn't but you know um looking at it again and it's the sum of it is sort of a loving pack shot of the interior of the bmw absolutely so we the, should have we should have got some sort of kickback first didn't. five minutes is, is shot like a like a fantastic car commercial exactly. it looks so great but i really hope that you know as a consequence of this something like audi or honda will do their their next mm. commercial will be some bloke <laughs> driving, driving along on his hands free <laughs> saying the car's great but everything else is <laughs> my whole life is crap but right, yeah right. The whole, the yeah the um, great. Yeah. Yeah. thing we always mention on our on our comedy show is that folks like uh, Johnny Depp make Rango because then they can make a film in their underwear yeah. right they don't yeah, have to yeah. get dressed <laughs> yeah just don't leave so the there's got to be something to one set 
right? This, this, this is not even a joke. After making a film in the conventional way, which is, what, six months of your life in hell, <laughs> which it really is, and then you think, well, is there a way of doing this in 12 days? <laughs> what <laughs> what um, if instead of six months of hell? Yeah, what 12 days of hell. The house? But, but the actors, I mean, to be honest, the actors, for, you know, for them, do I want to devote eight weeks of my life to this or do I want to devote eight days of my life? Yeah, yeah. I do have a question along those lines, though, because yeah. this struck me similar to Castaway, where somebody said, oh, that's a very brave thing for Tom Hanks to do. Mm. He has to carry this whole movie. Mm. But as an actor, and you're given a script, oh, yeah, and you're on every single page, <laughs> and it's just you, is that really a big... <laughs> it's not a disadvantage. <laughs> right? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's a great <laughs> thing. It's a, it's a really good thing. And, um, you know, and you're sitting down. Yeah, exactly. I'm it's, sure those things yeah, are no, right? <laughs> no heavy stunts. He doesn't have no, to pick no, anybody Will, up, break them over Smith, his back, no, or anything. It doesn't yeah. crash. <laughs> no kissing. Right, so if you don't know the film, it's called Lock, and it will be out later this month. But we already saw it at the Phoenix Film Fest. Yeah, yeah. And if we haven't uh, teased you enough of what the plot is, Tom Hardy the whole time. So, you know, guys, if you love Tom Hardy, and ladies, if you love Tom Hardy, <laughs> it's Tom Hardy for the entire feature film.